I start? I guess I will start at the beginning. One of the reasons that I loved Peter Street was the quality of the merchandise wasn't indicative of the neighborhood. One of the things that I learned in my research was there were not that many storage facilities in downtown Atlanta. It was the U-Haul facility on Peter Street, J.W. Dobbs, Ansley Park, which was a sure guard, later on became public storage, and then the one off of Howell Mill. And it was a smaller one off of Chattahoochee. But that was virtually it. Or you had to go all the way over to Virginia Highlands, to, which was Meridian, then it became Metro, or Extra Space, I believe. So essentially, you had people on the back end of, I guess you would say, Northside Drive. They were storing stuff there, so anything could be there. Which would explain this unit. I bought it, and it was one of those nights that I was really, really pushing it. Peter Street had this history. You could get caught in the elevator, which happened to me. And some people have been locked in the building because it's such a huge and expansive space. Some people think it's haunted. Because when you're up there on those top levels and it's just you, it is exceptionally creepy. It used to be, a, I believe, a meat packing, meat plant. So there's a lot of death clinging to the air. Well... I was there late, (laughs) real late, really pushing it. They were on the intercom talking about where we shouldn't really shut it down. And I had just a little bit more to get out. When you were cleaning out a unit, there is so much pride in not going back that you will do extraordinary and crazy things to make sure that your vehicle's loaded so you don't have to come back. I've seen people stack trucks up. 12, 10 feet high just to avoid coming back. I was in that mood. I was like, I'm not coming back. I got the room. If I can just hustle, if I could just move really, really, really quick. So I grab the box. Then all of a sudden, the fucking monkeys start going off. There was six of those fuckers. Apparently, they were in the box and they were all wound up. And this is what people do. And if you're going to move and you're going to hire movers, learn something called fucking tape. I don't know how many fucking boxes that I have picked up and the shit has just fell out all over my feet because someone thought folding flaps was sufficient for books. Well, in the case of this unit, monkeys, the little monkeys with the symbols and they just go bang, bang, bang. There were six of them in there, and they, like I said, they just dropped out, and they were all over the floor, and they were just like, bang, bang, bang. The people were on the intercom, and I was just like, okay, calm down. Just calm down. Grab another box, clean this mess up, and let's roll out. And I grabbed the monkeys, and I put them in the box, and I got some other stuff, and loaded up the cart. It was stacked up to the, I mean, really, really stacked up high. <laughs> And I get in the elevator and I get down and the lady literally is walking out the door and she was looking at me. You know, all you know, what almost happened. You've been here before. You shouldn't be having these type of issues. I said, OK, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to know you. And I was moving and putting stuff in there, moving, putting stuff in there. Then I just moved the cart outside and then she just, you know, I got my van and I put it outside. And then she locked up the building, put their alarm on and got the fuck on. <laughs> now I'm there with my monkeys. And if you don't know about the old Peter Street, because when I was doing the, uh, the cityscape, I realized how much the area has changed. <laughs> Significantly so. Because I was out there with those six monkeys, all of that stuff in the van. And it was just late at night. Peter Street was super, super sketchy. And 
you know, it was going well. Then I heard the click, click, click of high heels. And I looked up and I saw two hookers or hoes or prostitutes, whatever. They, they were those kind of girls. There was no doubt about it. And I just kept loading, loading, click, 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 got louder. I was like, fuck, here we go. Hey, how you doing? You need some help? Mm-mm. No, I'm good. You sure? You need a date? And it, the, there was one that was doing all the talk and the other one was just looking all whacked out and crazy. Like she had just smoked the biggest joint on the planet because... Or maybe the biggest crack pipe. I wasn't really sure which their drug of choice was. But I do know they and drugs were closely related. Very intimate with drugs. No doubt about it. And she was like, you know you need a date. You loading all that stuff. I mean, I could suck your dick right now. And I was like, fuck, here we go. No, 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 no. I got to get this shit on. So I'm loading and everything, and I'm trying to get the stuff in there. I'm trying to get the stuff in there so I can get out. Because in the area, and I've dealt with them before, some of them, most of them are pretty passive, and you say no, and they just get the hell on. But not these two. You want us to help you load? Okay, I want to paint this picture. One of them had on some cheap, payless high heels, Feet looking like she had been kicking dust. This shirt dress, I don't know what it was. It was just, it, it looked like a shirt that was a dress that was really stretchy knit. And hair that looked like she just woke up and like short hair, don't fucking care. The other one had on this jersey type deal. It looked like a jersey, it went real low, it was also knit. And she didn't have a bra on. Droopy titties were pouring all over the place. And she had on some high heels, closed to closed toed. And she, like I said, the whole time she didn't say anything. She didn't say nothing. The other one just like, you know, you know you want a date. You know you want a date. No, I just want to get the fuck on. So I'm almost got the band loaded and I'm about to depart. And then the other one who has said not one damn word proceeds to pick up the damn box with the monkeys which they fucking fall out all over the place and bam 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 at this point I'm hot I'm hot I don't know why you over here with your crackish hands touching my shit and I'm trying not to lose it I'm really trying not to lose it because it's been a long day. Well, I was stressed out. I bought a lot of units. I was worried how I want to get stuff cleaned out. I overbought. And here I am fucking around with two crackheads at Peter Street. Then this is the problem with that type of neighborhood and a crowd. A crowd draws more people. So I am trying to pick up the monkeys again. She's just sitting there, hadn't said a word, just looking crazy. The other one was like, you know you need a date. And then I hear this. Yo, big boy, big boy. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And this dude is at the corner because we're in the parking lot by the loading deck, right? And he's out there on the street. And he's like, you need some help with all that? I was like, you can have it. What did I say that for? Why? The next thing I know, he's coming over like a broken down pimp. It's like, what you got here? What you got here? What you go? Oh, you here with the ladies. You here with the ladies. And at this point, I realized they knew each other, which became really, really scary. You know, so he's acting like he just showing up on the scene like Johnny fucking on the spot. And when he's like, oh, you with the ladies, you know, and he's putting his hands on their shoulders and everything. And these are crackheads and they look a little dirty. And he didn't care. He was like, you know, like the honey badger. They dirty, stanky. Honey badger don't care. And I was like, Phew. so while he's got them kind of entertained, I'm almost loaded up. I get to the van, to the front seat of the van. I get in there. And then this is when it's like, look, 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 you know. Uh, we trying to get a room tonight. We about $50 short. 
you know, this one can suck your dick. She can suck your dick. Shit, you know, if I need to suck your dick, I'll do what I need to do. It ain't like I haven't done that shit before. Got in the van. Locked the door. Turned on the van. And was heading out the parking lot. Then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. They beating on the van. I was like, why are you beating on the van? Then I slowed down because I didn't want to hit one. Who wants to be on the news for hitting a fucking crackhead at Peter Street? News at 11. Man runs over a crack. No, I didn't want that kind of attention. This was before the storage auction shows when everybody was like, yeah, I do storage auctions. Back then, we were like, I'm just a collector. That's what I do. I'm a collector. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I look back and they're off the van and everything. And I leave, and I leave, and I'm rolling out. Then I realize I left the monkeys up on the dock. Now, the monkeys, they're kind of collectible if they're in good condition. And after dropping them, and I debated, do I want to go back? Because I dropped the monkeys at least three times. The monkeys were a little gun shy. Maybe the monkeys were a little fucked up. Maybe their little arms were broken. Who knows? Is what was going through my mind. And I said, all right, they're your monkeys. Your fucking circus. Your fucking monkeys. Go get your monkeys. So I whipped the van around and I head back. They're sitting up on the dock playing with the monkeys and smoking crack. And they're not hiding about it because, you know, let, let me explain you how Peter Street works. You see the building. And as the cars are passing, if you can see those coins, those little cones that are down there in the street, that's the interest. It's a pretty broad interest. Access, I mean, a very wide angle of access for your eyes. And just they're sitting there playing with the monkeys, winding them up and shit, and smoking crack, all three of them. And I go back, and it's like, ah, oh, y'all knew you were coming back. I knew you were coming back. This, ooh, you some. Get some of this head, man. Get some of this head. Relax yourself. Relax yourself. You want to hit? It's good. No, I just came for my monkeys. Your monkeys. And they all said the shit at the same time. Your monkeys. Your name ain't on these monkeys. Those are my monkeys. Your name ain't on these monkeys. And then the one who has not said a word is my monkey. This is my monkey, and I named him Calvin. You've named my monkey Calvin. No, no, it's my monkey. He is mine. I've always wanted a pet monkey. I was sitting there like, I don't believe this shit. I don't believe this shit. It was just like, this, this is just over the top. But once again, this is what happens when you fuck around at Peter Street. So, at this point, I've got a choice. There's three crackheads who are smoking crack, who are now high or higher, and there's my monkeys. Do I engage in mortal combat with the crackheads to retrieve my monkeys, or do I just get the fuck on? So, I weighed out my options. I didn't want to touch them. I didn't want them touching me. I didn't want to pull a gun out of them. Because then at that point, I'm catching a felony charge. So, I just leave. I said, fuck it. You can keep the monkeys. You can just keep the fucking little monkeys. I don't care. They probably won't work long anyway since you touched them with your crackish hands and everything. And I get in my van and I drive off and all of a sudden, don't. Donk, 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 donk. They're throwing the fucking monkeys at the van. If you've never dealt with crackheads, if you've never ever had to understand the mind of a crackhead, the impulse control does not exist. Boredom is easily attained and they can switch up on you in a heartbeat from like, I'm your friend to fuck you. You thought you were my friend? Fuck you. This little pipe. This pipe is my friend. Never let me down. No, 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 no. Yo, they're throwing monkeys at my van. I don't even stop. I just leave it alone. It's just too much. 
and I go home. And I think that's the end of the story. My partner says, hey, how'd it go? I didn't even bring up the monkeys. Not until weeks later, because I didn't want to have, I didn't want her laughing at me. Because that's what would have happened. And I was already hot, a little perturbed, a little pissed off. So life goes on, get past it. Another next month, there's an auction at Peter Street. And who do I see signing in at the auction? Number crackhead number one, crackhead number two, crackhead number three. And they looking at me. We looking for some monkeys. You know what the monkeys are? And that is a hustler story. You made it to the end of the video. You're special. And I got some stuff for you. If you didn't know, be sure to get your free or pay what you want audiobook. 10 Essential Steps to Hustling. This is how it works. You don't have any money, but you need information. You can go ahead and get it. And I have more for you. After you get that, I want you to get this. This is a business book with a business template. Sure, I talk about storage auctions, but there is so much more in there. And once again, pay what you want. If you want to pay anything, if you can't, go ahead and get the information. Later on, come back, share the love. I know you're that kind of person. That's why I'm doing this, because that's who comes to the Hustle Mindset Project. And then I'm about to give you the keys to the castle. I'm going to teach you how to get the best deal possible with what I do. So here you are. This is the beginning. This is the gateway. This is the door. I made a decision to close down the other Facebook group because it was much larger, but it was full of fuckery and other stuff. I would rather have a small group of people who are really trying to do something than a large group of people who are about bullshit. That's me. So join the Facebook group, 200 bucks, one time fee, no other fees. And this gets you 50% off most products. Let me say most. It's not 50% off of master level classes such as Digital Pimping Academy and the original Hustler Mindset Project, which is closed at the moment. And this gives you a good deal. And I'm going to show you some of the good deals. Say you spent 200 bucks and you wanted to take full advantage of your discount. Now, how do you take advantage of your discount? Once you become a member of the Facebook group, I'm just going to put a code in the group to say, gee, I want to use my 50% discount. How do I do it? You put the post in Facebook and I give you the code and you can go wild. You have no time limit when you can use it. There's no rush. So if you want to get 50% off everything forever and ever, yeah, you're done like that. Okay. Now you can get 50% of this. Now what is the hustler's mindset mentoring? So many people want to talk and have the conversation about manhood, hustling, business, self-discovery, being self-aware. That's what the hustler's mindset is about. And I decided, you know, I just can't talk to everybody one-on-one -on -one because usually it's a long conversation. But in a group setting where you can participate and share, we can talk about a lot of things, get a lot of things done, and grow and be successful together. Topic manhood. Manhood right now is a, a seriously slippery slope, but I've come up with some things and I'm gonna give you some information. And I'm gonna tell you something and do not put this in the comments because this is probably be a course at some point. I had a situation with child support. I got my New York City child support case dismissed. I did not turn any paperwork. I did. It took 14 months of fighting, but I got dismissed and I moved on. There'll be more to that story. And that's why I don't want you to put it in the comments. But if you know of anyone who's gotten their child support case dismissed, email Amy at Digital Pimping and let me know. Because every one of my friends that I've told about this has been shocked. So that's what's going to be there with some other stuff. When I say the Hustler Mindset Project, it isn't just not a slogan. It's not a it's, it's real. It's how I live. Build a tribe. Going forward, traditional marketing, advertising will be innocuous. It just will not work at all. You're going to have to be creative. You're going to have to tell stories. You're going to have to build a tribe. 
This is one of the things I think you should get. Great book. Yes, I know I wrote it. Money Chats. Say you don't want to be part of a group setting talking about those issues. You just want, I have a business. I want to make some money. How can I make more money? What can you do? It's 500 bucks a month. You can cancel any time. Conversations and consults are confidential. I never tell anybody exactly what my business folks do because I understand you want to keep your success secrets secret. The original, well, this is the second one, the Hustling Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success, the Agency of Men. The United, the YouTube channel is built for men. There's a lot of women here. I really appreciate it. But the core focus is on men, men's rights, and making money. So there's two books, the original Hustling Mindset, Pimping Your Mind, and this one. Definitely get both of them. Say you kind of don't want to really talk to anybody. You just want some information to help you start a business. Well, if you join a Facebook group and you get this 50% off, then this is $50. And this is a very powerful course. Very, very powerful. And it's ongoing. We are at, yep, we're two weeks down. And then next week or probably tomorrow, we'll start with this. And I'll give you a little, all this is audio. Week one and two are audio. Now, why are they audio? So you can get started and you can listen to it in your car and you can listen to it when you're on your way to work and you can listen to it when you're doing laundry so you can get started. It's designed like that for a reason. These will be the webinars because we're going to get a little bit more involved in some other things that are going on. Disruptive mating. The same guy and the same man's guy to life, love and sex. I will give you some of my best practices because I used to be a really nice guy and I used to get fucked over quite a bit by life and women roughly about 1999 2000 I changed as a human being and I developed a dating ritual that when I use it and I employ it I'm very successful and I'm very happy with my dating choices I get what I want, they get what I want, and that's what disruptive mating, this whole business of you got to go out and buy chicks drinks and do all this stuff. No, I'm going to say this right now. If a woman really likes you, she will fuck you where you are doing whatever without you spending a dime. That is in disruptive mating. A lot of guys love this book. It's real talk, real time information, stuff that I currently use. This is a very powerful course. Disruptive money, a little bit of everything. Manage your money or your money's going to manage you. One of the reasons that so many entrepreneurs who do well end up broker in bankruptcy court is they don't know how to manage their money. I don't care if you make 30000 a year. I don't care if you make 300000 a year. You need a budget. If you do not manage your money, your money will manage you. In this course, I give you some very powerful tools. I give you the information and the structure that will keep you from being broke ever in life. It's not how much money you make. It's what you do with it. It is very, very important. Now, once again, there's a lot of audio books and I didn't want to put them all up because it would have been an extremely long end of the video <laughs> video. But there's... 13 files there's four links to other files and there's more stuff coming so you go ahead and get in here and this is lifetime you buy this whatever i put out as an audio book now and in the future say i become a billionaire and i put out the billionaire's audio book you will get it bam because you're here early and that's what i think that you should do if you're wondering how to be successful if you're wondering where should you start this the hustler mindset project it's full of tools to help you have a better life, have a better dating life, and to make money or to make more money. Chock full. And what I'm going to do here, and this is a really, really special offer, and this is why I ask that you do not say anything in the comments and let people who are supposed to get this information come to it on their own. You sent Amy an email saying, I got to the end of the trailer. Or I got to the end of the what the Hustler Mindset Project is about. I got to the end. Let's keep it simple. I got to the end and I want the $1,000 special. The $1,000 special is I will give you a code and you will have access to everything in this Gumroad account. 
which is roughly 100 gigabytes of data, information, content, and training. So I got to the end. I want that special. And I'm not going to say, oh, you got it. We get to the once you send Amy the email, you've got 24 hours to, to cash in on it because what people like to do is get the deal when they don't have the money. So if you don't have the money, don't say anything. Don't send the email. Just wait. It'll be here for you. But once you get the email from Amy, you got 24 hours to buy it. After that, it will expire. So that's it. Now we're really at the end of the video. And I want to thank you for watching this far and listening and all of this other stuff. And I will see you in the next session.